Hey everyone, and welcome to the 23rd episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. This episode is hosted by RPG Alexi, a good friend and extremely talented launchpadder. I want to give a huge thanks to Alex for joining me today, and make sure you check out his channel in the description. Hi, I'm Alex. I'll be hosting the Launchpad tutorial on the Mets channel today. In this episode, we are going to take a look at advanced sampling techniques using Isotope's RX7 software, with the help of which we will be extracting drums like kicks, snares and hi-hats from songs. First of all, a quick introduction for those who have never heard about RX7 or seen it in action. RX7 was originally designed by Isotope as a software package for repairing and adjusting audio using a spectral visualization of sound. This visual approach combined with the different modules it comes with will be quite useful to us, since we can do way more with this program than is noticeable on first sight. Alright, as you can see I have already pulled open a snippet of a song into here. To quickly wrap your head around what is happening here, let me explain. On the top and bottom you can see the left and right channel respectively. The timeline goes from left to right and the different frequencies are shown on the vertical axis. Additionally, the brighter the colors in a certain area are, the louder are the respective frequencies. That said, it might help to imagine working with RX7 as a type of Photoshop for sound, in which we will be doing quite a bit of painting with sound today. Now that we've got the basics out of the way, let's actually start doing something. Quick reminder, we are not going to be using the newly introduced music rebalance tool, since it can be quite inaccurate on specific drums and to be honest, it is a very lazy approach to removing drums and RX. Everybody can click a button and let the rest automatically be taken care of for you, but only the ones who know what they are doing will achieve the result they wish for. That doesn't mean the module is bad by any means, quite the opposite, but I won't be covering it in this tutorial for obvious reasons. Alright, first of all we want to take care of the kicks in our song. The reason for this is that they are oftentimes very noticeable and easy to remove. Also, they usually make up the base of the track, so by getting rid of them first, it will result in a cleaner space to work with later on. Here we can see a kick in isolation. We can separate it into two parts. The click or transient right here, and the tail of the kick right here. Those are the things we will be looking for and removing from our song now. For our first technique, we will be looking for an already fairly clean kick in our song and cleaning it up further. The less sounds are on and around the kick of our choice, the better. If you happen to find a kick in isolation, by the way, congratulations, you can skip this step. Here's a kick that I found to be pretty good. We've got a nice visible transient and tail. The tail is especially important, since it can sometimes be mixed with a sub bass, making estimating its actual length much harder. Let's copy paste this region with the kick in it and insert it into a new tab. To start cleaning it up, we will be cutting off the left and right parts of audio that contain no useful sound. Be careful on the left side, since you can easily cut into the transient. To cut this precisely, use this slider to make the waveform visible. Zoom in and slowly slice the way towards the kick, making sure to not take away too much of it. Now that this is done, we will be using our various selection tools and selecting the areas containing unwanted sounds. Remembering the isolated kick, this is what we will be taking away. Again, be careful when approaching the transient area and keep an eye on the waveform. The algorithms can sometimes make a mess. In that case, undo and adjust accordingly. To prevent bigger mistakes during the cleanup, make sure to listen back regularly to what you did. When done correctly, you should have a pretty clean and usable kick like this. For our second technique, we will be doing the opposite and actually removing the kick from the song. This is a bit more brute force and might not be completely accurate, but it is still better than other methods when done correctly. Remembering the isolated kick again, all we have to do is locate and remove the kick's elements from a snippet. Again, the cleaner the snippet, the better. This one seems to be just fine. Let's insert it into a new tab. First, we will be removing the tail, since it is generally the easiest to remove. Using the various selection tools, we select the tail and use the gain module to carefully lower its volume. If you are feeling adventurous, you can also try straight up deleting the section to save a bit of time. Once the bright tail is gone, we can shift our focus to the transient. One way to remove it would be the declick module, since a transient at its core is basically a click. I suggest using the multi-band random clicks algorithm with maximal sensitivity and no click widening. Apply the effect carefully, since it affects anything that looks like a click to it. If you find yourself unhappy with the results declick gives you even after experimenting with the sliders, there's still the manual way of removing the transient. To do that, we'll zoom into it and carefully select and gain out this bright vertical line. Be careful as to what you select and apply gain to, since the further away from the main line you go, the higher the chances of taking away sound that doesn't belong to the kick itself. As always, experiment and adjust as you see fit. 
When you find that the right shape of the kick is gone, you can listen back to the snippet and see if you are happy with your work. If not, undo, rinse and repeat a different way. To finish up this technique, we will be selecting this whole snippet, copying it, scrolling up in our history and clicking paste insert. At this point, you can paste special invert and mix your kick list snippet, which should cause a kick to appear. If it doesn't, check if the snippet changed in length during the removal process. In case it has, export both the initial and kickless snippet and do the inversion in a different program like Audacity or Ableton Live. Make sure to only invert the kickless version, so the kick keeps its polarity and you can use it later on without issues. Next up, we will be removing snares. I have already removed all the kicks so we have a cleaner space to work with. As with kicks, let's look at a typical shape that snares tend to have in electronic music. Here's a snare in isolation. We can separate it into three different parts. The transient, right here, the tail, right here, and the noise of our snare, right here. If you paid close attention, you might recognize that except for the noise after the initial hit, a snare looks a bit like a pitched up kick. As with kicks, we will be looking for a good snare first. The conditions for a good snare are basically the same as for kicks, so let's start searching. Keep in mind that depending on your song, finding a good snare might be fairly difficult. In this case, you need to figure out other ways than the common ones I show here to remove them. Usually this involves experimenting with different modules. This snare seems to be fine though. Applying our first removal technique can be seen analog to what we did with the kick. First cutting the snare to shape and then cleaning it up. Looking at snares, we have a problem on our hands, which is the noise. Other instruments will oftentimes be polluting it, which will make cleaning up a bit more tricky. In this case, we have a lead instrument going straight through it. Luckily, it's not that much, so we can localize the frequencies belonging to it pretty easily. Using our selection tools, we are going to just select the regions with the horizontal lines and gaining or deleting them. In this example, the more lines you remove, the cleaner it will sound in the end. Seems to have worked pretty nicely. The snare is nice and clean now. Since there are cases where you simply cannot use the first method, there's still the second one. Though I have to admit that even I haven't found a completely reliable way to get a totally clean snare with it yet. We are still going to try it out and see how it goes. Just like when removing a kick from a song, we first turn our attention to the obvious parts of the snare that we can remove easily, those being the transient and the tail. After that, there is still the noise left. We can try to get rid of it in a few different ways. One way would be to use the spectral repair tool, using settings similar to what you can see here. Another way is the deconstruct module, which splits up the noisy and tonal contents of our snippet. Since there are a lot of ways to go about this task, I won't show all of them, but here is what I got from carefully spectrally repairing for a bit. Now that we have removed the main drums from the song, we can look at hi-hats. At times they can be an optional thing to remove, but it's always nice to have worked with them at some point. Here's an example of an isolated hi-hat. As you can see, it's mostly made up of noise, with a bit of transient at the beginning. Since we are dealing with noise again, it would be pretty hard to accurately remove all of the frequencies precisely, since those are basically random. In this case, we'll grab the spectral repair module once again. Using a horizontal direction of interpolation and a decently sized but not too big surrounding region around our hi-hat, we can tell RX to adjust the random noise in a certain way that makes it look similar to what is around it. What that basically means is that the module will lower the volume of everything within our selection that it thinks is out of context. Context being the region around the hi-hat. As we can hear, the hi-hat is mostly gone. Sadly, as far as I have seen and heard, inverting this part against the original will often not result in a very usable hi-hat, since the context dependency tends to be a bit fuzzy and take away more than is necessary. You can still try to sculpt the resulting sound into something resembling a hi-hat, if possible, using gain and fading. Keep in mind that you probably won't be able to invert all of the hi-hats if you do that. In that case, you will need to remove all of them by hand. Anyway, this concludes our journey using RX-7 to remove drums. Here's what our final product sounds like.
Remember that in order to get the best possible results, you will have to sink quite a bit more time into the topic and experiment quite a bit on your own, finding out what certain modules do, how they approximately work and what their limits are. In this regard, experience and knowledge are key to a good end result. If you have any more questions, you can leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye.